The existence of the homeless population is growing along with the development of our country. This is the total of homeless people who have registered as of March 2019 in Kuala Lumpur. NGOs focusing on homelessness like Kasih for You have contributed to help migrants live in a proper place and receive necessities. The government has done a decent job in handling this issue by placing over 500 homeless people living on various streets of Kuala Lumpur in shelters during the ongoing movement restrictions. However, many are still left behind. Due to unstable COVID-19 cases, many have to live from hand to mouth as business companies were forced to shut down which resulted in people losing their jobs. Vagrants are a threat to the nation during this pandemic as the threat of homelessness gives a poor description for our country. Taking an example of Sao Paulo, Brazil, the city was flooded with homeless people who had to seek protection in tents, under bridges and around public squares. It is a challenge to apply self-care for them while avoiding COVID-19 infections. Overall, this pandemic has a massive impact on the increasing number of homelessness cases. Based on the survey we have, causes of homelessness in Malaysia included death, domestic violence, poverty, mental health issues, losing a job, and marital and family problems. 90% of the homeless community are Malaysian citizens and not foreigners. The majority of the homeless are members of the workforce who do not have access to a sustainable source of income to afford a place to live. Kuala Lumpur is the worst state that is described by vagrants with 50% rate followed by Johor and Sarawak. The figures of homeless persons in Kuala Lumpur have crippled over the years and will likely increase unless measures are taken to assist them. A news headline from Berita Harian, numbers of homeless people increased effects from lockdown. As we could see, the COVID-19 pandemic had worsened the homelessness trouble worldwide. A news headline from Melbourne, Australia, few people would consider sleeping in a public toilet on a park bench or a traffic island lucky. The numbers of homeless people escalated too. 22% during the COVID-19 crisis. We can surprise this issue by implementing these results. Firstly is to implement the short-term solution. Based on our research, we have come up with three efficient ways to end the homelessness dilemma in our country. To begin with is by integrating healthcare. We can co-locate and coordinate integrate health services with housing. The aforementioned is to connect patients to housing resources and provide services in the homes of the homeless people. Moreover, is to build career pathway. Employment pathway access to meaningful and sustainable can be increased. Programs organized to connect people to career pathways need to be coordinated with housing and other interventions. Finally, by strengthening crisis response system, we can help reduce the number of vagrants in our country besides helping them turn over a new leaf. Strengthening crisis response system basically means we help them meet basic survival needs such as food, clothing, and personal hygiene. We can also secure permanent housing opportunities for them. Based on these three solutions, we strongly believe that strengthening crisis response system is the best way to help lessen the number of homelessness in our country. It is because we can secure permanent housing opportunities while help them meet basic survival needs, such as food, clothing, and personal hygiene to lead a typical daily life. COVID-19 pandemic is an eye-opener and stimulus for us to start battling with issues at hand more proactively by implementing long-term solutions. Therefore, we would like to highlight two long-term solutions that we deem required. First is social protection. Undoubtedly, Malaysian government has made an outstanding effort by implementing policies and programs such as Bantuan Prihati National and Kerjaya Geek, which are designed specifically to ensure basic standard of living for the citizens. These programs include housing subsidies, reduced medical fees, and allowances. Thailand and Finland also have made an effort to provide jobs by implementing Jangwan Kara Hayami program in Thailand and permanent houses by implementing housing first policy in Finland. Undeniably, the social protection approach provides social insurance and social transfers for the citizens. However, the unfortunates may become over-dependent on the government, lack emotional support and worse, lack the knowledge and skills to get back on their feet. Second is promoting social entrepreneurship. It is an empowerment approach by individuals, groups, or even startup companies in which they develop, fund, and implement solutions to social, cultural, or environmental issues. This concept applies to a wide variety of organizations, focusing on social innovation with an entrepreneurial mindset to create social values in a society is what made it a sustainable solution. For instance, the goal of extraordinary people impacting community is to bridge the urban-rural division through the aga of building homes for the underprivileged community. In a nutshell, this concept, in addition to meeting basic needs, 
provide learning opportunities and promotes self-sufficiency within the targeted community. Inspired by the proverb, give a man a fish and he will eat for a day. Teach a man to fish and you will feed him for a lifetime. We are convinced that social entrepreneurship is the best long-term solutions and should be implemented more widely. Our housing support system is the sustainable solution to deal with the homeless dilemma. This is the concept of the house you are working on and this is the application of HSS. HSS is a system that will provide sustainable solutions in reducing homelessness and creating job opportunities. Also, to diminish homeless people's dependency on external help, improve the standard of living and reduce inequality. We will provide a clear picture of what we are implementing in our standard operating procedure and the 3D version of apartment design. Taking account of various aspects, of course, we want to provide the best infrastructure for them in terms of daily needs into the bargain training to discipline the participants and empower them. There, their virtues will be better guarded and there will be various opportunities for them. HSS also creates job opportunities for them after they have completed all programs successfully and can perform work to the job scope they apply. HSS then will be the future of government housing initiative to produce a systematic and transparent living condition. As to ensure the success of this housing support system, we came up with the standard operating procedure. The developer will create an organization. In our case, we name it Rising Under Privileged Malaysian Association and Housing, Roma, which will provide housing for homeless people and start the business to train and employ the residents. The developer will need funds from financial institutions, government grants, angel investors, or personal savings to construct the housing. Furthermore, forming partnerships and collaborations are highly encouraged. Green and sustainable four-story apartment buildings, as well as other facilities, will be constructed by the developer using the resources obtained. The organization will provide basic needs and access to employment. Furthermore, support services focus on three areas, which are the social, economic, and environmental sectors. Before being accepted into the Roma community, the candidates must meet few qualifications. Residents of Roma will attend the classes, seminars, and programs as training. Once completed, they can either work at the Roma or the outside world. Jobs at Roma include sewing products, cooking packed foods, and planting flowers and agricultural products. After they have stable work and enough savings, they can pay their rent according to their income. For the organization to be financially independent, they will sell the products produced by the residents. The aim, social impacts, and social values are homelessness reduction, social stability, and self-sufficiency. Furthermore, is the Homeless House Village. We named it RUMA, which stands for Rising Underprivileged Malaysian Association and Housing. We chose apartment to be our homeless house design rather than terrace house, owing to the fact that apartment has a lot of benefits. Now, let's take a look at the design. The RUMA community includes an administration and activity hall, a lecture hall, a playground, a greenhouse, four housing building apartment, an infirmary, and there is also a courtyard facing apartment building. Firstly is the greenhouse. The greenhouse is intended for the homeless community to do agriculture activities during their free time. Next is the apartment. The apartment is a four-story apartment. The reason why we suggested four-story is because it doesn't involve the use of elevators or known as lift. This is so sufficient that it can provide many house for the homeless people with low maintenance fee. Lastly is the courtyard. The courtyard is provided so that they can have fun and exercise to stay healthy. We have also provided some of the activities for the community to participate. The activities include agricultural activities, sewing, cooking, religious class, sports, business, basic self-defense, basic computer skills, and job readiness training. Findings from our studies have shown that homelessness cannot be defined by one cause. The homeless seek help and awareness from the society to help them survive this pandemic. To improve our housing support system, we decided to collaborate with various parties to support the funding, which as as will be right in advance in Kuala Lumpur. However, we will continue constructing it in other states to boot. Altogether, we hope to create a better nation for the community to inhabit. Homelessness can decrease with commitments and efforts from people from all walks of life.